Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Z Reviews Tech and the Ulophone Power 3 is a pretty good phone after Ulophone updated the camera software and the Verni X here is a direct competitor. This is a big battery MTK phone just like the Ulophone Power 3. It has the Helio P23 processor, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of storage which is the big difference between this and the Ulophone Power 3. The Ulophone Power 3 only has 64 gigabytes, the Verni has twice that. And of course, this has a massive 6,200 milliamp hour battery. Now, the Verni X and the Yulophone Power 3 are close enough in terms of everything that either phone could win by a very narrow margin, but let's see who wins in this. So this phone feels very nice. In my opinion, it feels a lot nicer than the Yulophone Power 3, even though both these phones are made of metal. Um, the Yulophone Power 3 has a much smoother metal back than the Verni X, which has a very nice matte metal back and I really like the feel of the Verni X's back metal than the Ulophone Power 3. However, this and the Ulophone Power 3 are both the exact same size. They're both 9.8, 9.9 millimeters thick. However, Verni has curved the side bezel so that when you're holding it, it doesn't feel like you're holding a one centimeter brick. Now let's turn our attention to the front of the screen. As you can see, there are top and bottom bezels and side bezels as well. The top and bottom bezels aren't actually that big. The bottom bezel here is fairly small. It's definitely not big enough for a fingerprint sensor or even capacitive button. That's why you have to have those virtual buttons over there. Top bezel is pretty small. It's big enough for the microphone and the sensors and the camera, so that's good. The side bezels, though, are bigger than you think. If you measure the distance between the glass, like the screen, up to the glass of the phone, it's small, but then the phone continues curving outward. So the bezels here are definitely bigger than you think. That being said, the bezels on the top and the bottom and the sides are definitely very small for such a big phone with a big screen and a big battery. The one downside to this phone is that you do not have a headphone jack. You have to use the included uh, micro USB or sorry, USB-C to headphone jack adapter to listen to music unless you move to Bluetooth, which thankfully works well. The one upside to this would be the included case. It is higher quality with the bumper on each corner, meaning that you don't have to buy another case to replace this because the original case is too crap. It's actually pretty good, and I've been using it for quite a long time now, and I like it quite a lot. All in all, the Verni X has excellent build quality, but it is a bit big to use in just one hand. On the Verni X is a 2160 by 1080p resolution on a six inch display, and the screen looks quite nice. Text and news articles are super crisp when you read them on the screen, and the colors are very deep and saturated. These photos look definitely quite stunning on the Verni X. I will say that immediately after using the Ulophone Power 3, the screen on the Verni is definitely a bit warmer than Ulophone Power 3. I do prefer slightly cooler screens myself personally, but this screen definitely still looks very nice. Maximum brightness though tops out at around 400 to 450 nits, which is adequate but not in bright sunlight. You are not going to be able to see the screen if the sun is too bright. There's one more downside to this phone. There is no Gorilla Glass on the front of the screen and there isn't actually any mention of any kind of protective glass on the display at all, not even you know Dragon Trail glass. So this is most likely just regular glass on the front of the phone. So I wanna talk about the audio here. The Verni X has decent audio. Max volume with the volume enhancer off is pretty average. It's definitely not loud enough to listen to in super loud environments, which actually is more important now that there is no headphone jack. But if you are not in the middle of a highway, you can hear it pretty well. Audio quality is definitely decent. I really like the clarity and separation between tones coming from the speaker. However, I do think that the speaker still lacks bass. It doesn't lack a lot of bass, but more would definitely have been better. So let's watch this clip from Battlefront 2. Alright, let's talk about the battery life. I already talked about the battery life in the full battery benchmarks gaming review. Um, and let's talk about battery life very quickly again. As you could see, um, I didn't use the phone that much after the uh, that video. I was pretty much testing the standby battery life. 
And the standby battery life here is okay. Um, as you can see, I've had this phone on for about three days now, and the screen on time is about seven hours and 14 minutes. Uh, obviously, this is super, super heavy use, you know, YouTube, gaming, benchmarks, among other things. I, I rank quite a few benchmarks on this phone. In fact, I think the standby battery drain on the Verni X might actually be slightly better than the Eulophone Power 3. That being said, battery life on the Verni X as well as the Eulophone Power 3 over here are so good that I don't think there's going to be a huge difference even if the Verni X is very slightly better. Um, the one downside is it took me about 4 hours to fully charge this phone up. And again, I didn't have a quick charger so I couldn't test that either. All right, let's talk about software. It runs Android 7.0 and Verni hasn't really promised anything with regards to updating to Android 8.0 Oreo anytime soon. Software optimization here is better and worse at the same time than the Eulophone Power 3. Um, swiping between home screens and you know going to the settings and everything is super fast and fluid. Definitely 100% faster than the Eulophone Power 3. No question about that. However, it's kind of weird that when I'm swiping up from the bottom of the home screen and I compare that to the Eulophone Power 3 over here, it's way, way slower compared to the Eulophone Power 3. Look at that. Look at how instant that is compared to what I have on the Verni X. All right, watch this. It's so, it's so like choppy and laggy. But if you compare anything else, it's so much better on the uh, Verni X compared to the Eulophone Power 3. And swiping between home screens, this one is more fluid, even though they're both the same speed in terms of animation. So I definitely like the overall software experience on the Verni X better than the Eulophone Power 3, except for this, where it's kind of slow and kind of laggy. This is very weird, and I do hope that Verni will fix this particular issue in the future. So the Helo P23 does a pretty decent job at launching apps. Um, it's not as fast as the Snapdragon 625, which is still slightly slower, um, but it still does a pretty admirable job at launching apps and launching you know, big apps. There is a little bit of lag, I will admit that, but it's not crazy. So it's definitely very, very usable by um, you know, regular people who aren't you know, tech crazy, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe someone like me or someone like you who frequents this channel a lot. However, once you load those apps into memory, then they launch instantly because there's six gigabytes of RAM. And so you can store a lot of stuff in there, absolutely no problem. And the one thing I wanna show you is that this phone has 128 gigabytes of storage, which is absolutely insane. Again, I could store so many videos, so many TV shows and movies on this phone without even using an SD card, which is pretty awesome. I also played many games in the gaming video. It can play pretty much anything on lower settings and there isn't much lag. There is some, but not much. So here's some gaming video for you to enjoy. The fingerprint sensor here is also pretty accurate, but it's not that fast. I'm used to a lightning fast fingerprint sensor on my Xiaomi, so this feels slightly sluggish in comparison. 
There is also face unlock and it works well, but I don't use it that much. That being said, the fingerprint sensor is a little bit high for me. I can barely reach it um, with my uh, normal hand position. I kind of have to adjust to move it up just to be able to reach the sensor. A small issue, but an issue nonetheless. The Helio P23 does support Volti and VILTE, but unfortunately my carrier doesn't do so, so I couldn't test it. However, I was able to get 4G LTE on my carrier in Canada. And um, as you can see, the speed test that's running now, the speeds here are incredibly blazing fast. Reception is also pretty decent as well. It's definitely better than the Maze Alpha over here, which does have the Helio P25 and not as many um, you know, Wi-Fi LTE um, options and features. So the reception here is definitely pretty good. Wi-Fi wi reception though is average. I do get slower speeds as I go farther away from the router. It doesn't drop like a stone like other phones. <clears throat> Bluetooth works. And GPS is slow, but it does get a lock and it's fairly accurate. It does jump around a few times during navigation, but it is definitely still decent. I already have a full camera review video for the Verni X and I will summarize here. Basically, the Verni X can take great photos, definitely better than the Ulephone Power 3, but it has some major problems with the software. The good photos definitely look nice and have a lot more detail in than the Ulephone Power 3. However, it has big problems autofocusing. It takes about five seconds to autofocus if you don't tap on the screen, which is pretty ridiculous. The other problem is that it records videos on the front facing camera out of sync with the audio, which is super annoying. So these are all software problems and I do hope Verni fixes these as soon as possible. To be honest, Verni was this close to me outright recommending this phone over the Ulephone Power 3. It's better in terms of build quality. I like it better, feels a lot nicer. Software is faster in general, except for this weird app drawer swipe up thing. Then the camera can take better photos than the Ulephone Power 3 over here. However, it is let down by that weird app drawer sluggish bug and the unfinished camera software. I do have no doubt that Verni will fix it, but the question is when, and will they fix it in time? So what are my recommendations? You currently have two options. You either have the Verni X, or the Ulephone Power 3. Basically, I would say to you, get the cheaper phone. Whichever one is cheaper, whichever one is on sale, get that one. However, if they are both the same price or if you want a recommendation, if you have to get a phone right now, get the Ulephone Power 3 because it works. You know, the camera software does work and that's all good. However, if you are able to wait and Verni does fix the camera software on the Verni um, X, then the Verni X will be a better phone than the Ulephone Power 3. So to summarize, if you can wait, Verni X. If you cannot wait, Ulephone Power 3. Pretty simple. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Likes and subs are definitely appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.